Good morning. The Lord be with you. So on this Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week, and the first service of Holy Week, we want to welcome you to worship today, whether in person or online. Um, if you're visiting with us, we're so glad that you're here, and we would ask that you fill out a visitor information card that you could find in the pew. And if you'd have a prayer request, um, the same thing, the prayer request cards, or put it on a piece of paper and put it in the offering plate later. Is there anybody who didn't get a palm? All of a sudden we realized the palms hadn't made it from the parlor into the sanctuary, so the kids were passing them out. If you didn't get one, raise your hand and we'll make sure you get one, or two or three. You see, we've got a whole bunch left. Um, announcements. I know Maggie has an announcement. I've had lots of people ask me over the last week how much money we made um, at our Hope Chest dinner, and I was waiting to see about our expenses. And thankfully, the Mission Council decided that they would pick up the cost, the food costs. So we raised $3,630 to get to Pelotonia, and the good news is that will be matched by um, a corporate sponsor. So we'll have twice that amount as our contribution. So thank you so much for everything you did for that purpose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you All right, yeah. Yeah, very, very exciting, very exciting. And did you want to say anything about if anybody still wanted to? Oh. You, you mentioned that. Okay. If anybody still wants to contribute, it needs to be done um, today. today because we're going to write that check on Tuesday and get it given to the right people. So if you didn't get to come and you wanted to make a contribution, do that today. Thank you. And of course, you've probably seen on the, on the slide, there's one right there now, Monday, Thursday, um, and then Good Friday service. They're coming around. And then I know the next one is, what an opportunity. We can see all these. Oh. And then Sunday, sunrise service at 7, breakfast at 8.30, Sunday school or Easter egg hunt at 9, 9, 9.30, so, and then worship at 10.30. Boom. You can switch that off of there now and, and, and get ready for worship slides. Um, good timing, though. So important things happening this week, this Holy Week, worship services during the week, Thursday and Friday. And then, of course, next Sunday's, um, next Sunday's worship services and activities. Um, are there any other announcements? Well, please take a moment then to share the love and the peace of Christ with your brothers and sisters sitting around you. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Let us enter our time of worship in prayer. God most high, gracious and glorious, blessed is the one who comes in your name. Lead us now on the road to the cross. May we follow with faithfulness and joy, shouting Hosanna in the highest heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. With crowds from ancient times we cry. Hosanna, save us. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you in the house of the Lord. Let us all join together for our opening hymn, number 196, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. be seated. Christ comes to the center of our busy, conflicted lives. He comes in triumph and humility. He comes in glory and in mercy. He comes knowing the best of who we are, and he comes knowing our worst. Trusting in God's grace, let us make our confession. Christ, Christ our Redeemer, Redeemer, try as we might, we do not follow your example. We do not empty ourselves. We do not humble ourselves. We are not obedient. You simply ask us to care about this world you created, but we fail to do even that. Forgive us. You have given us the greatest, clearest example of love. Heal us and help us to follow. Amen. Even in, even in the face of um, hatred and, and violence, we know 
that Christ loves us even when enduring death. Christ cares for us. Christ forgives us. Thanks be to the God of mercy. Kintsugi says is a 15th century Japanese art of repairing broken pottery with lacquer mixed with powdered gold or other precious metals. Broken pieces, when repaired with patience and love, reveal new lines of character and beauty. So the slide that's up there, what is on the left, all those broken pieces, through this art of Kintsugi, have been put back together using gold or some other substance, but usually gold and other bonding materials. And the pot that is on the right is a result of that, that patience and that love putting those pieces back together. And I didn't see a picture of the original bowl before it was broken, but I really like the one on the right. It is, it is just a gorgeous bowl with all those extra lines, all those things. But it 
But what of God's world, the world God entrusted to our care? There are so many parts and pieces and places that are broken and damaged by cruelty to each other, misuse of creation, or refusal to take take God's commands seriously. In Isaiah 58, as we've been hearing all through these one great hour of of, um, sharing talks, the prophet reminds us, you shall be called the repairers of the breach. Repairers. And as we question the breaches that may have resulted from our own actions, we ponder how to repair them creating something unique, something beautiful, something more resilient. Which ones get our attention first, though? How can we repair a breach that may have existed for a long, long time, maybe even decades, or one that has only recently emerged? Where can we work to repair, to reveal beautiful new veins of gold? as in that pot that we saw, as they were, all those veins were were put together with gold. Your gift to one great hour of sharing provides a way, provides a way for those whose lives have been affected by poverty, hunger, or disaster, whether natural or human caused. And boy, have we seen a lot of those things in the news here the last several weeks. Where do we start, though, to begin to repair the lives of the families and the communities? It provides, one great hour of sharing, provides a way for the least of these, more often than not, women and children, to become those veins of gold binding together families and communities and bind them together in a strength that maybe they wasn't there before. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God repaired the breach that separated each one of us from the Creator, performing a kintsugi of sorts upon us, putting the broken pieces of our lives back together while lining our broken pieces with gold, the gold of God's love and grace. And as we follow Jesus' example, walking alongside the most vulnerable, to partner in repairing the harm inflicted upon them. We celebrate that we are the church together. As it says on the slide, if we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Let's pray. Restoring God in Jesus, you have given us the ultimate example of repairing the hurts that divide us. May our gifts to one great hour of sharing and our prayers join with the most vulnerable among us to restore your people and your world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we have our special spot all picked out. Yeah. Well, today I brought the Bible that Rod and I read to our kids when they were little. And I've read from it with you guys a couple of times. Um, But we're going to read the Palm Sunday story today. But before I do that, look at what's on the front of the Bible. What is that? Can you see what it is? It's Palm Sunday. It's Jesus on Palm Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, he's riding the donkey, and they're waving the palms, and I was like, oh, how appropriate. So I'm going to read the story to you today, and it's short because it's a children's Bible, so don't panic. Jesus stopped outside Jerusalem He told his followers, 
In the next town, you will find a donkey that has never been ridden. Untie the donkey and bring it to me. Tell anyone who asks that it's for the master. The men brought the donkey to Jesus. Then they laid their coats on the donkey's back for Jesus to sit on. Jerusalem was crowded with people for the Passover feast. Everyone was filled with excitement. Oopsie. A great crowd went out to meet Jesus as he entered the city of Jerusalem. The people shouted praises to God for sending Jesus the promised king. They called, Hosanna! Blessed is the king! And they waved their branches from the palm trees, and they spread their coats on the road like a carpet. Loud praises filled the city. But some of the Jewish leaders did not believe in Jesus. They said, Teacher, tell your followers to be quiet. But Jesus said, If the people don't praise me, even the rocks will cry out with joy. Let's listen to that one more time. Jesus said, If the people don't praise me, even the rocks will cry out with joy. Hmm. And that got me to thinking. And I brought a basket of rocks with me today. And I started wondering... If these rocks could cry out this morning, what would they say? Nothing. Nothing? I said, if they cried out, right? You don't think they'd say anything? Okay. Hmm. Caitlin, would you come and pick up one of these rocks for us? Hold it up real high. Let everybody see that rock. Okay. I wonder if maybe this rock might say, remember that shepherd boy, David? He used a small stone to slay a giant. And this showed that we can do anything with God. Hmm, maybe that's what this rock is saying. Thank you. Grace, you want to come and pick a rock? Hold it up nice and high so we can see it. Hmm. Maybe this rock might be saying, remember the prophet Elijah who used stones to build an altar so that we could offer sacrifices to God, our one true God? Hmm, thank you. Hmm. Blake, you want to come pick a rock? And hold it up nice and high. He wants the one on the bottom. That's the special one. Hold it up. Let everybody see that one. I wonder if maybe this rock might be saying, remember Solomon used stones to build a beautiful temple so that people could come and worship God. Yeah, maybe that's what this rock is saying. Don't forget about that. Hmm. Ollie, you want to come and pick? No? (laughs) Remington, you want to pick a rock? And maybe this one, this rock is telling us to remember how Jesus told the story of the wise man who built a house on rock 
And when the storms and the winds came, that house stood firm. So after reading this story about um, how if the people didn't praise Jesus, the rocks would, it kind of got me thinking, nah, I, I don't want the rocks doing that. That's my job. So just like the people on Palm Sunday waved their branches and praised God, we're doing that today too. And we're doing that today so that the rocks don't have to. So let's not give the rocks that job. Let's do our job, right? Is that a deal? All right, so we'll do the praising, and we'll let the rocks do their rock thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> they do, I don't know, all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> All day, just sitting there, yeah, yes. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, we know that you would rather hear us praise you than hear a rock concert. So, Lord, we lift your name on high. Amen. Hey, guys, just a reminder, next Sunday is when we bring our fish banks and I have some extras in case somebody did not get one that would like one. Is there anybody who didn't get a bank that would like one? Okay. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 118 and is a responsive reading. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Okay, let's see how many we got up here. Ooh, we got a lot. We bought too many, Ray Jean. Ugh. Now, I always... What? Oh, okay. You can't say nothing around here. I always look at this story, right? We have this story of Palm Sunday, and it seems like such a festive day, right? Please, nobody fall on these later. But it seems like a festive day, right? We come together, we have Palm Sunday, and Palm Sunday is kind of the really happy day that we all have before we get into the Thursdays and the Fridays of it all, right? It's one of the happiest days of the year, isn't it? Man, you guys are stoked today. <laughs> it's one of the happiest days of the year, and so we all have our little palm branches, right? What do we do with these palm branches? What are we supposed to do? Woo! That's right, some of y'all. And then what do you say? Do you think that's what they did? Uh, come on, what do you say? How do you think it went? I like that one. Is that what you think? Isn't that neat? Let me go this way a little bit. 
Get our palm branches. Look at that. It's festive, right? Does this feel festive or does this feel weird and awkward? What do you think? You can be honest. Feels a little weird. You guys can stop now. Unless you just feel so moved by the Spirit. Now, there are palm branches everywhere, and I, I do seriously want everyone to not fall. Myself included. Now, Palm Sunday, to me, you know, it's just, there's just a little bit of awkwardness to it. It's a little bit of awkward for multiple reasons. One, what do you do with these palm branches? Right? What are they for? Other than my kids, I'm sure you guys are real excited. You sat behind my kids today. Get poked, right? Is that what they're for? I know growing up, they were for me getting yelled at. The whole point of the palm branch was so my mom had something new to yell at me about. I'm fairly positive. We would get these things in church, and then we weren't supposed to do anything with them. And at best, at best, we would do something similar to what we just did. We wave them. And we say, Hosanna, and we say it as, you know, as excited as we possibly can through the awkwardness of it. Through the awkwardness of it. But isn't it an exciting day? It is a fun day. It is a day that we are celebrating. This is the day that we can be oh so very happy because this is the day that the people of Israel, or at least that a lot of the people of Israel realized and recognized that Jesus was king. And because of that, we can have joy. Because of that, we can shout, Hosanna! Because of that, we can wave our palm branches. Because of that, we can do whatever you guys want to do to make this an exciting and a happy day. So I do say, to start off, please make this a happy day. Make this a happy day. Today is not the day to go home and clean your bathrooms. Today is not the day to be sad. Today is not the day to be extra, extra rude to our kids for all the poking and stuff. And so in my house, we will take those palm branches so that we can have a good day. Have a good day. I don't think all of us, because, but a lot of us are going to go see Shrek. That'll make it a nice day, right? Just yesterday, we bought a, a car. So, I don't know, maybe that's a good day. Maybe we'll drive around in the car. I don't know. But make today a good day. Because today is a day that we celebrate. Because very soon we will get to things that we cannot celebrate. Now for some of us, and I don't mean to pick on people who don't come to Thursday and Friday services. I'm not trying to do that at all. Please don't hear me as doing that. But for many of us, we come to Palm Sunday, we have kind of a happy day, and it's kind of a warm-up for Easter, which is the happiest day. Christmas Eve. It's the happiest day. And so for many of us, we miss... The theological in between. Because in between this day on which God is celebrated or Jesus is celebrated as a king, we have the day in which he tells all his disciples he's going to die. We move on to Monday, Thursday. And we have Monday, Thursday, and we have Jesus declaring to his disciples that he will die and that when he dies, y'all have to be nice. Y'all have to love each other the same way I've loved you. And he washed their feet. And he instituted communion. And he gave them a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. A new mandate. So if you want to learn some Latin today, mande is Latin for mandate. Sounds a lot like commandment. A new commandment I give you. To love one another. It's a happy day and a sad day. It's kind of like that day in which many of us have experienced on which a loved one is about to pass. And maybe for a moment, you get to share with joy before that passing. Maybe for a moment. 
So it's a moment that's nice. But it's a moment that's sad. It's a saying goodbye. It's a saying goodbye and a, what I want you to do in the in-between. And then we have Good Friday. And of course, Good Friday is that thing that if you look it up, Good Friday, the first thing it says on Google is, why is it called good? Because if you know anything about Good Friday, it, 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 it's not good. It's, it's a sad day. It's a day I have much difficulty planning because you don't want to leave that day just as, as sad or as bummed as you possibly can be, but also we need to leave that day realizing that we are in need of a Savior and realizing that we are part of the reason that Savior came and realizing that we are part of the reason that Savior died. So we have to have this moment. In between Palm Sunday and Easter, we have to have this moment on which we're saying goodbye. And we have to have this moment on which all might be lost. It's harder for us because, you know, we know about Easter. We know about what's coming. We know about all of this. We know about Jesus' resurrection. And we, and we know about that. And we can't pretend it away or anything but we can't understand that the disciples didn't know that was going to happen. We can understand that for the disciples, they were trying to figure out what all this was. For the disciples, they lost their king. And they might have had some idea of him coming back, or they might have had some idea of something different that was going on, or some way in which God was going to make a, a silver lining in this cloud, but they didn't know about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They didn't know that he was going to defeat death and resurrect and ascend into heaven and take us with him. They didn't know that. And even the things that you could read in the Bible, you might say, oh, well, Steve, I've seen it in the Bible. I've seen places in which the disciples talk about and, and understand that he's going to come back to life. Well, that's only in review. That's only with our, our rearview glasses. That's only with our hindsight. That's only with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, yes, there were, there were signs and keys throughout the life of Jesus that he was going to go back. He said he was the sign of Jonah, for instance. But they didn't understand. And so from this trip, as we come from Palm Sunday and these loud joys and exciting, this sort of exciting and happy day, and this trip all the way to Easter on which things worked out better than anyone could have ever hoped, we have this time of goodbye, and we have this time of fear. We have this time of unknowing. And the word Hosanna, or the word Hosanna, or however you want to say it, say it the way you want to, this word Hosanna really speaks to that, because I wonder if we know what Hosanna means. Because if I had to guess from the way we use it, it means something like, woo! Right? It means something like, all right, you know? Yes! I don't, I don't know. Look at there! Something like that. We shout, Hosanna, and it is, a, it is a sign of joy. We shout, Hosanna, and it is a worshipful experience. We shout, Hosanna, and we meet it as a way to glorify God. But the word Hosanna itself means, Lord, I beseech you to save me. Something in there. I beseech you, which is a word we should bring back. I beseech you, save us. So these people shouting, these, these Israelites who are shouting, they're seeing and they're recognizing this king. They call them a prophet from Galilee, or Nazareth in Galilee. They see this prophet. They see this Jesus. They treat him like a king. They spread their palm branches. They spread their coats on the road. They treat him as a king. And they ask him, to save them. I beseech you. Save us. Lord, we beseech you. Save us. 
Now, if I were to tell you that this word translates roughly to something like, Lord, I beseech you to save us, wouldn't that sound like a much sadder word than the word Hosanna? Wouldn't that sound like a word that you would say in the depths of despair? Doesn't that sound like a word you would say when you were in need of salvation? Wouldn't that sound like a word you would say when all was lost? A word you would say when you saw someone who might be able to save you from the terrible predicament you're in and you are begging. It feels like a word of begging. And yet even here, we didn't make this up. Even here, we see in this scripture, this is a happy time. This is a word that they are using, a word that we constitute as being joyous and a word that we use for being as a praising the Lord. And it's this word that is tinged with need. Lord, save us. Lord, save us. And it's kind of like the whole Easter week to me. It's kind of like the whole Easter week to me. Because we have this time of joy. We have this time of great joy. We have this time in which we're saved. We have this time in which the worst predicament that we're in, that we are dead in our sins, is solved by the very Lord and God of this universe. So this is a time of great joy. And yet, just like the word Hosanna, it has this tinge of sadness and desperation. This tinge of sadness and desperation. Lord God, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna to the Son of David. To the Son of David, save us. To the highest heaven, save us. To the Son of David, save us. To the highest heavens, we beseech you to save us. just like we have on Easter. We need to remember that, yes, this is the very God of this universe. And we need to remember that, yes, that this very God of this universe will save us, that this very God of this universe will answer our hosannas by saving us. The highest heaven, the Son of David, will answer this very request of us. And so this very request of us, this very longing of our hearts for salvation, this very longing of our hearts for being saved becomes a praise. Because it's answered. It's answered in the story of Jesus Christ. It's sad because Jesus had to die for us. It's sad because part of us, because part of who we are as people, because of the things that we have done, the, the parts of us that stray away from the very God of this universe, the parts of us that call out for salvation, and the parts of us that need it, and the parts for us that shy away all need it. So it's sad. It's a mixture, isn't it? It's a word of great joy and a word of salvation. It's a word of great joy and a word of salvation. And when we are saved from something, I, I guess what's important to me is that we know that we're saved from something, right? That we need saved. That we need saved. And I can think of many predicaments in my life on which I was narrowly escaping death, on which I narrowly escaped death the worst of a situation in which I narrowly escaped. And when I knew about it, I was thankful and grateful. But I'm sure there are times on which my mom or dad saved me from choking to death as a little baby. I'm sure there are times I can remember a time in which I almost fell down all the stairs and my brother stopped me from falling down all these cement stairs and I punched him. And I punched him. For saving me. We need saving, everybody. We need saving. 
And I think that's something that might be missing from our kind of church. It's talked about a lot in other kinds of churches. But from our kind of church, I think that's something we miss out on a lot. We're so grateful for the salvation that we forget about the fact that we need it saved. But we need it saved. And we need it saved. We were lost. We were in desperate need of salvation. And it came in the form of Jesus Christ. And so I hope when we shout Hosanna, I hope when we shout Hosanna, that we can remember not only that we have been saved, but from what we have been saved. Amen? Now let's all stand up and sing our next hymn, which is Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Thank you. Please be seated. Unless you're one of the elders serving communion, then please come forward. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from the east and the west and the north and the south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him. This is the table. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share in the feast with which he has prepared. We give you thanks that on the night before he died, he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share in this feast, united in ministry with every place. And now let us pray what you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there are one loaf, though we are many, we are of one body. For it is of one loaf for which we partake. And when we break the bread, is it not the sharing of the body of Christ? And when we give thanks over the cup, is it not the sharing of the blood of Christ? The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please come forward with everybody. Keep doing that. I'm sorry, Dick. I'm the opposite direction.
I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. join me in the unison prayer of dedication. Everlasting God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son to take our nature and to suffer death upon the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our uh, prayer request for Tina today. Our prayer request that came in today, we have a prayer for David Sherwood, who's Bob Krause's son-in-law. His uh, cancer has returned and is spreading aggressively, so prayers for them. Uh, Charlene Bishop, prayers for her, as she is going to have surgery on Monday uh, for her gallbladder in Chillicothe. 
prayers for the communities devastated by the recent storms and ongoing storms across our country. For the family of Godwin, who died yesterday of a heart attack, and this is a co-worker of Sarah Creamer. And for Carol Holliday's daughter, Tricia, who is having surgery Thursday at Riverside. Lord God, we come before you today in joy. We come before you today knowing our need for salvation. We come before you today in great happiness. But Lord God, we pray for all those who have suffered loss. We pray for all those who are suffering through these dangerous and difficult times. We pray for, for Tricia's surgery. We pray for Charlene's surgery. We pray that they go well and without incident. We pray for Godwin's family as they have lost him, their family and friends. We pray for those who have been devastated by our storms across our country. We pray for them. And we pray for David Sherwood and for his wife and for their whole family. As they face this situation of aggressive cancer. Lord God, we pray for each and every one of them and for all of those that are on our hearts. And still yet, we praise your name today. Now let's all stand and sing our closing hymn. Right on in majesty. Well, I hope uh, you can consider coming to any of our wonderful things we have this week with our, our Monday Thursday service and our Ash we our Good Friday, excuse me, services, which are both seven o'clock in here in the sanctuary. And then uh, Easter morning sunrise is at seven o'clock, and it's going to be out there, kind of on the steps. You could bring a lawn chair, or you could sit on the steps, or it's, it's going to be a nice day. So we'll have that in the morning. And then that's followed with uh, breakfast at 8.30 and then either Sunday school or the Easter egg hunt, depending on how old you are, and church. And then, of course, after church, everybody can't just leave. We are going to go out front on the steps again, and we're going to take a big old group picture. So we're so excited. I'm excited to do that because I know whenever we look through old pictures, everybody's happy to see the big church group pictures. And so, well, we've got to keep making them so people in the future can be happy too, right? So for now, let's go forth in the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the united power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen.